Welcome to Kikao, your weekly authoritative program on Africa's agriculture. On the show this week, we focus on the women. They are seen as the face of agriculture on the continent, but just how much do they get out of it? My name is Joe Ageo, and in a short while, we'll be speaking to a panel of experts to tell us exactly what Africa's agriculture has to offer for the women. But first, the scene setter. All our young women should be involved directly in agriculture and they don't, they, they, we don't allow them to just work for us like our ancestors used to do. When, when, when the woman would till the land in the, on the farm and feed the husband and the husband is there just drinking palm wine in some parts of Nigeria. If you say you are into gender development and you take one segment, you are beginning to fail because you never run on one leg and win the race. So you must take both of them together. So today, men and women are doing business together. There are tremendous inequities right now uh, in terms of resource use and market access. Women play a very important role in sub-Saharan Africa's agriculture, yet their access to modern tools, modern inputs, and their capacity to take decisions uh, in terms of agricultural uh, decisions is very low at the moment. Uh, most often they are marginalized groups with very limited access, although they play a critical role in terms of food security and nutritional security at the household level and at the community level. I think it's all about strategy and rethinking. If you don't add sense and value to whatever intervention you are doing, it doesn't give the desired result. When it comes to wanting to integrate them in the development space, then it has to be a very deliberate and targeted effort by every stakeholder appreciating a woman as a partner in development. Without empowering women, uh, we cannot make agricultural transformation real and inclusive. And wherever we have not done that in, in some of the continents, there have been cascading uh, downside effects of that. So empowering women requires a much more gender disaggregated approach. Uh, we need to consider the voices and the opinions and the aspirations of women in multiple stages of value chain, not just at the terms of inputs and uh, farm management, but also decision making at the household level and community level and the national levels. I always like to start from the point where I think it's high time we don't see women as beneficiaries of development. They need to be seen as partners in development. Only then can we appreciate their efforts. Involve them much more in terms of post-harvest processing and value chain development and make them more financially uh, independent and provide them the resources, especially financial resources to women to make them shift from this subsistence-oriented farming towards market-oriented farming. If you support one segment and you don't support the other, I don't see it as a complete development, and that is not what Africa needs. Let's now join Dr. Kanisha Skanangire, the executive director of AATF, as he engages a panel of those who would know what ought to be the place of the African woman in agriculture. Thank you very much, Joe. Uh, women make essential contributions to the agricultural and rural economies in all developing countries. Their role vary considerably between and within regions and are changing rapidly in many parts of the world where economic and social forces are transforming the agricultural sector. Rural women often manage complex households and pursue multiple livelihood methods. According to a 2015 FDB report, an average of 62% of economically active women in Africa work in agriculture and play a key role in food production and provision for their households. However, these female farmers produce less than their male counterparts because they own less than 2% of the world's land, 
with a mere 10% of agricultural credit access. The gender gap in agriculture is generally associated with limited access and control over innovative agricultural technologies, extension services, education, financial services, and rural employment. Women also have limited participation in agricultural research and development policies, interventions, and decision-making, and are underrepresented in outstanding farmers' organizations. On this week's episode of uh, Kikao, we examine the crucial role played by women in agriculture and how Africa can unlock their untapped potential to boost food production. My name is Dr. Kanishas Kanangire. I'm the executive director of AATF. And on my distinguished panel this week, I have a very known academic and practitioner, Professor Ruth Onyango, who is the founder Rural Outreach Program Africa and 2017 recipient of Africa Food Prize. And Mashumba Ramiso, CEO and founder Nandi Africa. You are welcome. Mm -hmm. Thank you. I think um, what I have just said is not enough mm. to really tell uh, who you are mm. and what you are doing currently. Mm. May you please take a few seconds mm. and tell us what beyond the food price mm. and the being a, an academic, a practitioner in, in agriculture, mm. who you are currently in uh, this theme we are developing to, today. CEO of Nandi, but what are you doing? Who are you uh, for, uh, uh, for us today in this Kikao? Let me start with the uh, <laughs> professor. Right now I'm running for parliament. Uh -huh. A constituency, Buteres in Western Kenya. We wish you very good. Yes, <laughs> yeah. I was there before, 15 yes. years ago, as a nominated member. Mm -hmm. And I really took on the issue of agriculture and food. Mm -hmm. And we passed some legislation, some acts. We even had the Right to Food Act passed. But uh, for some reason, it was never executed. So mm -hmm. my NGO right now, Rural Outreach Africa, with German funding, mm -hmm. we are trying this out to put it into practice in one county of Vihiga in Western Kenya. Mm. So my whole life really has been around food, even as a mother and as a grandmother now. Food for me is the first medicine. Food for me is it is the first, the most basic human right. Yes. If you can't have food, then there's nothing you're talking about. Yes. You mm. can't talk about development. Mm. And the reason why I prefer to focus on women is that you know we are the ones who worry about what everybody is going to eat. Mm. But we are forgotten completely. It's like the food issue is everybody's business because we want to eat, but it's mm. nobody's responsibility. Yeah. Mm. I think it should be our yeah. primary responsibility exactly. to all of us. Because yes. that is where you have the health issues uh, mm -hmm. uh, addressed and mm -hmm. uh, poverty, the mm. real poverty is when you cannot yes, yeah, uh, yeah. feed mm. uh, your And your huge potential correctly. for this continent, mm -hmm. you know, but it has remained potential. Yeah. I mean, I started working on now this when, when I was below her <laughs> age and I'm aging now and, uh, you know, it's still the same issues we're talking about. There's something yeah. we are not doing right. Let's hear how mm. she takes the button and, yes, uh, yes. and now unlock the potential. <laughs> and unlock it. Oh, yes, yeah. Ramisha. <laughs> okay, thank you um, for that. <laughs> thank you so much. Um, so for me, I am passionate about my community. Mm -hmm. I'm passionate about food security. Mm. I'm passionate about um, sustainable farming. You mm. know, um, in Africa, mm. a lot of us, we have been farming, like she mentioned, mm. and um, still the results you can't mm. see mm. in many areas. There's still food insecurity, there's still hunger, there's still poverty. Mm. And I believe that we haven't really harnessed technology enough. Mm. So I'm a champion for sustainable farming. I'm a champion for looking at different farming in a way where we're incorporating knowledge, mm. local knowledge, and also teaching our farmers how to farm better. Mm. My organization, Monandi Africa, um, that is what we, we do. We support women on the farm, um, access knowledge, because something I realized as a farmer myself mm. is that there isn't access to knowledge for women farmers 
on the ground, sometimes in local language. Mm -hmm. um, you find that a lot of these women are left behind because um, they would not have had the same education. So it's now mm -hmm. looking at how can we educate women farmers to be able to understand farming in local language, in easy methods, and also demonstrating and pushing the importance of conservation farming. Mm -hmm. um, this is also using of no-till um, equipment. The importance of even like right now, um, like you mentioned, we are going through so many challenges, some of them geopolitical, where even fertilizer prices are uh, triple. Mm. What other methods are there that we can use in order for us to still remain sustainable? I, I think that is very interesting. Mm. Uh, we need to be concerned about food and uh, make sure that food is available for our, our people and we cannot produce it if we don't uh, uh, look at the method to produce sustainably mm -hmm. and also use mm -hmm. knowledge mm -hmm. and technology. I think mm -hmm. it is very good. Mm -hmm. Now let's come to the, the African uh, landscape. Mm -hmm. How do you paint mm -hmm. the uh, participation of women mm -hmm. in the agricultural uh, production sector today mm -hmm. in Africa? Mm -hmm. They do all the production. They worry about what everybody else is mm -hmm. going to eat. Mm -hmm. But they are kept away from decision making, mm -hmm. from mm -hmm. policy making. They are kept away from the money. And you know, I've been around enough to know all the conferences that take place. And then resources are committed to Africa. Sometimes they call me. They say, Ruth, aren't you happy now? I say, no, until I see it on the ground. Mm -hmm. Until I see it on the smallholder farmer. Mm. And until I see it on the woman farmer. And let me also say that it's not in the whole of Africa that you have women only farming on the ground as smallholder farmers. I've been to other countries specifically where it is man and woman also farming. So it all depends on the cultural setting. But to a large extent, yes, it is woman. But, you know, everybody else eats, but the woman does the work. So I think we, we just do too much talking. Yeah, mm. ED. We do. Mm. It's just too much talking, but mm. very little action. I can mm. tell you that as a as someone who has been in this sector for a long time. So until we are intentional, mm. Mm. very intentional, mm. and supporting and putting you know uh, uh, resources where our mouth is mm. in policy terms and even mm. the donor community, because mm. it's very romantic. You just talk about, oh, Africa is women who produce the food. It sounds very sexy mm -hmm. and nice, but we don't put the other resources. Yes. And what women need, by the way, I've seen, is not even a whole lot. Because the technologies she's talking about, mm -hmm. very critical. Mm -hmm. The knowledge transfer, it needs to be done in a way that suits the woman. Mm -hmm. That suits the woman. Yeah. She cannot be leaving her home going to some center, to some training, staying there for three days, mm. what meantime is happening to her family? Because she's the primary nurturer. And we have to put that into account. Yeah, yeah. and I don't see that having yeah. happened here. Yeah. Uh, uh, professor, you said um, mm -hmm. women mm -hmm. are on the, the, the shamba, the, farm, yes. the, the farming land. Yes, yeah. they, they do all the work. Yes, yeah. And indeed we know mm -hmm. they contribute to very, very, uh, actually very much, a, a huge contribution mm. to food production. Yes, yes. They are also in food uh, processing, yes. in uh, um, food, I um, mean, how do I call it? Uh, selling food and yes, uh, yeah, wood. Yeah, yeah. So mm. they are in all those Trading, different yes, area, yeah. areas. Mm. They l work a, a lot. Mm. But what we know is that at the end of the day, mm. they are not uh, necessarily the prime beneficiary mm. of what comes from the, uh, the land. farming, mm. f of, uh, yes, the farming uh, agriculture, uh, farming business. Mm. So, this is the situation. Mm. Why is that that way? Mm. What are those uh, factors, mm. those challenges which hinder hinder mm. the, the 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 women mm. to really benefit mm. of that production and that work mm. they do mm. on the farm? Mm. Um. It goes back to education. Mm -hmm. education. You know, I live in rural Zimbabwe. Mm -hmm. And, you know, on a day, on a normal day, you can just walk in the rural areas and mm -hmm. you find a young girl um, with a baby on her back. A young girl, maybe like um, not more than 10 years. Mm -hmm. 
mm. with the baby on her back, um, mm. cooking on the fire. Mm. Mm. And you ask her, why are you not in school? Mm. And she says, I can't go to school because my parents, uh, they've got, they're working on the fields. So I am the one who has to remain mm. at home with the okay. children. Yes. Mm. So already we're marginalized mm. in terms of education. Mm. So the girl child is, go is not going to school while the, the boy child might be going to school. Mm. And then it starts there, and then at a tender age, she's getting married mm. at 14 years of age. Mm. Already, she's already seen as she can't contribute much. Mm. So I think we need to address from infancy level mm. to yes. say, how do we make sure that our girl child remains in school? Yes. How does she mm. get the same access? Mm. Because even when you look at the statistics in terms of um, the, how the percentage of girls in school, they get less and less as we go up the hierarchy. Mm. For myself, I find myself as a farmer, I am attending meetings um, for policy, mm. for different things, and I find sometimes in the room, I'm the only woman. Mm -hmm. So something is wrong. Mm. So until we start making sure that we have more women on the table, and we see it as normal. You know, like in our culture, I remember like just having a conversation with other, as a young person myself, even my other, my, you know, other young farmers who are men, when we're having conversation, they still feel that there's nothing wrong. Mm. So until we, and we, up, we say to ourselves, there is something wrong. And you know what? We mm. really need both genders. Mm -hmm. We need both mm. genders mm. to be able for us to develop mm. Africa, the Africa mm. we want, for mm. us to reduce hunger. We cannot have one gender at policy. We need both genders. Mm. Yeah, mm. absolutely. And uh, I think indeed uh, uh, excluding or giving uh, just a mere place uh, mm. uh, to women mm. uh, in this sector will only undermine mm. what we can do in, mm. with the sector, with the enormous mm. um, potential we have on the continent mm. uh, in terms of uh, arable land, but also fertile water, mm. etc. We, we have everything we need, mm. and uh, yet uh, we don't put all the hands and all the brains mm. and uh, I will say even the heart, mm. as you said, mm. uh, so that we can decide of what to do. Mm. And uh, I, I think, uh, uh, as uh, uh, Ramiso said, it, it starts from down there. Mm -hmm. We mm -hmm. need to empower uh, the uh, future wi women mm. the same time we empower the future men mm -hmm. so that at the end they play the same mm -hmm. uh, t role and benefit equally of what we can do. I, I think uh, uh, it, it is very critical and we need to take uh, um, some decisions or influence some decisions mm -hmm. so that we can change that from, from the root mm -hmm. uh, cause which is that inequality uh, from the tender age. But when we come, mm -hmm. let's take a break. When we come, mm -hmm. we look at what we need to do to improve the situation indeed. Mm -hmm.